hear about the contribution, we have churches all around the world. Uh, and the benefit of that is when you have a, a songs leader seek, we can have someone who is on the uh, Sacramento church helping us, helping us with the songs. Amen. So let's give a big round of applause to uh, Junior, who's helping us this morning. Well, this morning, God has a message for me. And he told me, share with your brothers and sisters. Okay. Uh, this weekend, we're going to, well, actually, tomorrow, we're going to celebrate Memorial Day. Okay. And it's interesting because when I think on that, it basically, it helps me to create a... Uh, the reflection that I'm going to share with you. And it's important to understand first what is the Memorial Day, well, at least for me, right? It's a federal holiday in the United States. And basically, it's used to remember the people who died serving the country on the armed forces. Okay? So that is very important to understand. It's people who basically die serving. Okay? It's people who gave up his life, literally, for the purpose of freedom in this country, right? So, in a, I remember Craig a, say something about, but it's very important to understand, understand a, for tomorrow, many people would visit cemeteries and memorials to honor those who gave the life for the freedom you can enjoy this morning. So, let's give a round of applause for all of those people. Now, understanding the definition of freedom, I was thinking, and of course, I went to the dictionary, right? Freedom is the power of right to act, speak, or think as one wants without a restraint. That's freedom. And when you go deeply on the word, it can be a little bit of a challenge because I went and see some similar similarity on what is freedom, and I know I was looking for, and help me with this word, uh, synonymous, according to my English, but I don't know if it's correct. <laughs> synonymous, or you guys understand that, right? Yeah. Well, it was very interesting. When I start to see what are the synonyms to uh, freedom, I get shocked, and I will share with you. Freedom, one of those is independence. The other one is self-government or self-determination. So another one is self-ruling, autonomy. That, those are a freedom synonymous. So it's amazing because when you see the deepness of this, freedom is not really freedom. Freedom becomes something else, right? So this gives us the points of the service. Today lesson, I basically um, title a day to remember. And this morning, we will remember the ones who gave their lives for us, but more important, we will remember the one who gave the life for you have eternal freedom. I have three points this morning. The land of the free. Point number two, can you handle real freedom? Point number three, the real freedom or our true hero, Jesus. Let's go to the point number one. Okay, a day to remember, okay? So the question is here, how do you use the freedom you have this morning or during your life. How do you use it? I came out with this quote that it says, no one can be totally free if another human being is still a slave. I made this quote in the morning. So <laughs> reality is, are we really free? We have choices, right? You can choose what color of hair you want, right? You can dye your hair, you can change your clothes, you can change your tie, you can take a lot of different choices. You can choose what you're gonna eat, right? Either, even if it's healthy or not, 
right? If you're going to drink water or soda, I mean, there's a lot of different li little things that make you think you're free, right? But the reality, uh, and this is amazing because Spanish is interesting. The word for freedom is libertad, okay? But the total opposite is almost the same word, which is libertinaje. In English, libertinaje is debauchery. So it's the total opposite of freedom, okay? Because debauchery, you're going to do whatever you want to do in a wasteful way, right? But let's go back. So, so many of us think that we have rights. And so many of us, we're going to celebrate that tomorrow people gave out their lives for, for those rights. So I made my homework and I basically study about the rights and freedoms of America. Okay? The Bill of Rights that, I mean, I guess most of you guys should know, right? High school or maybe before, I don't know, right? I did my school in Mexico. So one of the first one, it's the freedom of religion. Okay, so America is famous for that. You can be whatever you want to do. And you can be whatever you, I mean, anything you think. If you want to start a new religion, you can do it. You're free to do it. Another one is freedom of speech. Another one is freedom of the press. And also, I add a little bit from my uh, own thing, is the freedom for the press and, f and to be the press. Okay, so you have that freedom also. You can be the press if you want. Okay, you have also freedom of assembly, which we are really grateful for that because we can have this morning this uh, assembly. Okay, uh, you have freedom of petition, you also uh, have the right to bear arms, uh, and I'm not calling no one to do it, but uh, it's a right. Okay, you have the right to be equal justice and also the right to own a, pri a private property. So but if you think, is this real freedom? The people who die, die for this. Is this a real freedom? If you think very deeply in each one of those, is what creates chaos in our society. So the true freedom is not as true as you think. The freedom is different. And we will see here how that affects the society in a very, very a hurtful way. That's what I say. No one can be totally free if another human being is still a slave of something. And we can see in this society the slavery on alcohol. Now, a few years ago, probably a couple years ago, people were celebrating that they were free. Now it's freedom to smoke marijuana. People were so happy, yeah, we're free. No, you're not free, you're a slave. Now it's worse because everybody knows, right? So that's the freedom that people, freedom that people uh, talk about. Uh, so the freedom that destroys marriages, freedom that destroys uh, families, destroys people, that's the freedom we're talking about. So, and it's the freedom, why? Because when you want to have your own property, the one you have the right to do it, Okay, probably you're going to do everything in your hands to have the dream of your, the house of your dream. Or probably you're going to do anything in your hands to have the car of your dreams. No matter what, if you have to steal, if you have to be dishonest, if you have to work for a many works, so it doesn't matter, right? That's the freedom. So, Let's see what the freedom creates in the world. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. 2 Timothy 3, and we will read 1 through 5. And we will see here a clarification of the actual society. And this was before in Jesus, in, in, in the times of the apostles of the church of the first, the first uh, in, century. So it says, but mark this. So this is very important and very interesting that the Bible says, but mark this. Meaning, pay attention, put some different color, listen very carefully, do whatever you want to do, but mark this. 
There will be terrible times in the last days. People with lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good. Should I keep going? Oh, it seems like a scene on your daily basis. We can see this exactly every single day around you, in the news, in the radio, in anywhere. Now, this is the freedom. Why? Because I think I'm free. People fought their lives because I can be free. So don't tell me nothing because I'm free. I can choose my life. I can do whatever I want to do. Thinking of that, I remember when I um, came for the first time to the church. I was a very stubborn, a prideful, exactly like he said. It seems like they talking about me. I was very disobedient to my parents. I was super ungrateful. Um, basically, a, my family, I had the opportunities to do more with my life. And I decided to waste my time in drugs, alcohol, sex, and parties. So when I realized and I uh, get to the Bible, and when the first time they show me that I was not a disciple through the Bible, when I realized I was away from God, and when I realized I waste my life doing always what I want to do, I was afraid. Did they say, are you a disciple? No. Are you saved? No. Are you wanting to be a disciple? No. When I can get baptized. That was my answer. Because I knew through the baptism, it was the forgiving of my sins. So I was afraid. I get baptized in five days. But it's because they kind of take time to see if I was a real. But uh, I mean, I could be, be, be baptized in two or three days the most. Because I understood that my freedom, it was debauchery. And my freedom, it was always do whatever I want to do. Exactly like these scriptures tells about. Centuries ago, the people is not different than today. Centuries ago, the people was looking for freedom, but reality, freedom is just a concept, a personal concept. Anyone can define freedom in many different ways. Because when you have right, well, probably your right stops when someone else has rights to do something else, regardless. So it's very interesting how here is telling us the clarification of that debauchery calls freedom. Without love, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, no lovers of God, treacherous, rash, conceit, lovers of the pleasure, rather than lovers of God. That was me. Having a form of godliness, but they deny its power, have nothing to do with such people. So the Bible here explains us what is the consequences of that freedom the world is looking for. Now, so many people gave this life for this country. Ask yourself, how do you feel if they come in here and they show up and they say, okay, I gave my life. I received like 17 bullets in my head. What are you doing with your life? How do you feel? How's your life? Is my sacrifice worth it to you? Or you're wasting your life in your pleasures? And if we think like that, I mean, we get moved. But what about the Son of God who gave his own life for your real freedom and you're still living like you're living? Have you asked yourself before that? The world is still a slave of the sin. In many ways, we as a disciples are still slaves of some time of sin. We're weak. We are humans, right? But unless we do something as soldiers of Jesus Christ, no one can be 
really free. Unless we decide to really be used by God and change our lives, the world cannot be have a real brotherhood. It's in our hands. So what is your freedom for? To please yourself? To entertain yourself? To be happy for whatever you can do? Or be what you want to do? Anything you can do is possible. Yeah, that's true. But what is the cost? What is the cost of that thinking? We have the opportunity to help others through the special contribution. What this creates in the society is a self-thinking. I'm always thinking of myself. What are my needs? What are my uh, decisions? What I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. Everything is myself, myself, myself. And that's the society we live on. It's very easy because you can see the society, uh, it's not about you, it's about me. That's the message we have from the society. That's the freedom we have to choose and do whatever we want to do. But the question is, what about if you are in the other side? What about if you are the person who needs help? And let's think on, in the, specifically on the special contribution, which, by the way, I'm super grateful as a heir was sharing his heart. I'm super grateful that many of us are going to have the opportunity to really accomplish that goal for God and help others in this purpose. Right? So now just put yourself in this thinking. What about is, if it's you in the other side? What about if you decide to go to Lagos, Nigeria, and you give up your work, your job, and you're away from your family, and you're away from all your comfort, and you don't have a car in Lagos, Nigeria? Okay? What about if it's you, the one who's asking help for? How are you going to feel if you get to one place and they say, oh, you know, sorry, uh, I didn't have time to go to tagging. Oh, you know, it's because I need to buy another car because the 2013 is kind of old and I need another one. Mm -hmm. How are you going to feel if you hear those stories? How are you going to react since you gave your life to a bigger purpose? to make some others be real free. This is something very special. You know, the voice is a powerful tool. You can use your voice to offend, to pray, to praise, to, you can use your voice for whatever purpose you want. But the voice is also a temperature of your soul. And it shows in this way, the inflection of the voice is going to tell how are you feeling or what are you doing. What about if you are the one on that mission field asking for help? How is going to be your voice? The inflection on your voice is going to be different than the one from the one who asking for help than the one who is giving help. How is that? What is behind? humbleness. When you need something, your voice change. When you need something, is the, the way you ask is different. Can I? Could you please help me? But when you give out, it's different. Oh yeah, sure, I'm going to give it. It's kind of, yeah, you just give it. That's it. So the inflection of the voice is very different. Why? Because some things make you humble. And that's the freedom. I'm so grateful for the extension of the time to be able to complete my whole contribution. Why? Because I'm really grateful for what we have here. The kingdom is something awesome. And it's until the time you don't have it when you realize how much and how precious it was for you. And we can see here the great example of Juanito. It was awesome being with him and see his heart changing. I feel so proud of you, bro. But you can tell the difference. You can see how much God is changed the people. So when I'm thinking how grateful I'm, I'm, I'm for the kingdom, 
I'm thinking also not only in, in, in this church, but let's go kind of uh, reduce the, the thinking, okay? Are you grateful for your disciple, which basically disciples you for free? Okay, that's very important. Because believe me, people waste thousands of dollars for therapy outside in the world. And of course, your disciple is not your therapist, but your disciple helps you to go to God and help you to straighten up your life. Yeah. And that's for free. And he calls you or she calls you, uh, oh, you know, I'm busy. I'm a little bit tired today. I work too much. Whoa. So I was thinking we're going to start to charge for the disciple at times. Okay. <laughs> so are you grateful for your Bible talk leader? Are you grateful for that? Because all of those things, without any doubt, came because someone before gave his special contribution. You are here as a result of a special contribution. I remember uh, more than 10 years ago when we was in, in California, and a Portland church, when it was it's starting, they helped us. They helped us to pay the Yahoo. Did I say correct? Yeah, they help us to pay the Yahoo. So we can be able to move here and, and, and help out the church. But so many people is being sent out because we were looking for, for a free, a, a real freedom, right? So are you grateful for the leaders in the church? Are you grateful for the song leaders? What about the song leaders? They're very important. Are you grateful for the people that you don't see here in front, but they do tons of work like Tomataka? Like Craig, like Sean? They're always trying to make this perfect. They gave their hearts because they believe and they're grateful. I get very familiar when a arrow it was sharing about the ants. And this is true. Every single time in your life is an opportunity to learn and understand deeply spiritual concepts. Lately, we've been uh, very into tennis. Uh, actually, one of my first dates with my wife is playing tennis. She didn't like tennis. And I say, what? You don't like tennis? Yeah, I went to play tennis with some brothers, and it's very boring. Go, oh, no, it's not boring. Did, uh, did they know how to play? Yeah, they were like this. So, oh, no, that's baseball, hermana. That is baseball. So it was one of our first dates. Uh, I teach her how to play tennis, well, as much as I can teach. But I love to play tennis. So two weeks ago, we went to play with uh, George. And I was super excited. Monique was there. We need someone to pick up the balls, right? <laughs> I said too much. <laughs> Monique was there trying to be encouraged by his uh, boyfriend and learn how to play tennis. Uh, but uh, it was amazing. George, uh, he used to train people how to play. He has a powerful uh, serve, but no stamina. So after three hours, uh, he looks like the old guy, not me. So it was funny, but we, we, we were so encouraged for that. And then uh, I uh, pursued uh, Alicia and Severin. And they came, uh, these guys are, are strong because uh, we played for four hours. And they were like, okay, okay, come on, serve. So, but well, that, that's the story, okay? It was amazing. But uh, what I did learn spiritually on that uh, uh, day in the court, I remember I had the ball. And I, I was about to serve, Alicia was ready, and I was like this, and then right there I have the revelation, okay? So, and this is the revelation. If I don't serve the ball, there's no game. If I'm not serving, there's no game. And this is the spiritual concept. If you are a disciple, if you're not serving, there is no game in the church. If you don't play, we cannot win this game. 
if you don't play, we're going to end up doing nothing. But it requires you're willing to play. What was the free, I was afraid for? Alicia is such an ex ex exceptional player. So I know even if I try my ace serve, she's going to return in probably double speed than I serve. So what is behind that? I was afraid to lose that point. I was afraid to don't reach it. So there's many afraids of in everything we do. Sometimes, as a disciple, we're afraid to serve because we're afraid to be hurt. Sometimes, as a disciple, we don't want to play. Why? Because, I mean, simply, we are so proud. And we don't want to do as we should to do. Now, the other question, point two, can you handle real freedom? What makes a real hero? Everybody loves to watch movies, especially the ones who say it in the, in the white uh, letters, uh, based on a true story, right? And you see, oh, this hero is amazing, all oh, these people. Oh. You, I'm, I'm pretty sure you have a couple of favorite movies where it's about heroes. One hero is the one who gives us his life for a bigger purpose. The one who gives everything for someone else. The question is, are you ready to be a hero? What is going to take from you to be a real hero? Can you handle real freedom? Being a hero, it will require to die to yourself. So many times, it will require to give up your dreams. It will require to give out whatever you want to do. Let's see Ecclesiastes 5.13. Let's go to the Bible. Ecclesiastes 5.13 and 17. And the Bible says, okay, and before I read it, this is one of the things that a lot of people need to give out, okay? I don't know what is a, basically a refrain you to be a hero, okay? Because everybody can be a hero. We have moms here. Moms are the heroes, right? Because you can see the, the little kids go mom, mom, mom. Fathers can be heroes because your little kids, they see you like the, there's no better dad in the world than you, okay? So even big brothers can be heroes because your little brothers see you like, wow, you're my hero. I want to be like you when I grow up. Even here in the church, everyone is kind of type of hero, right? This morning, um, literally, uh, Jack was praying, oh man, how are we going to do it, God? I'm a little bit it, it, with throat pain. And God listened to pray and sent us Junior, right? So, and Junior saves the day. But we have our hero, Jack Jack. If Jack Jack doesn't stand up and Josh doesn't stop, stand up to sing, who's going to be the hero? Who's going to receive the bullets? Oh, 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 he's out of tone. Oh, oh, he forgot the song. Who's going to receive the bullets? Who's going to be the hero? Right? Here we have that chance. But we need to give up, give out many things in our life, in our character, in our, in our desires, in order to become heroes. Right? So... Let's see one of the things that we need to understand, we need to get rid of and give out in order to become a real heroes. Ecclesiastes 5, 13, and we're going to read till 17. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun, wealth hoarded to the harm of these owners, or wealth lost thought some misfortune. So... That way they have children, there is nothing left for them to inherit. Everyone's come naked from their mother's womb, and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry into their hands. So, basically, no matter how much you work to get stuff, no matter how much you work 
to have the best home, the best car, the best career, you're going to go till the end with nothing. And the question here that we arise, how you want to be remembered for? Are you wanting to be remembered for your purpose or because you was a rich person? Or you want to be just so poor that you're just going to have money? That's the worst of the poverty, the ones who have a lot and they're nothing. So, give yourself and needs to put things aside. Luke 9, 23 to 25, that I most likely know that everybody knows that one. It says, Luke, exactly, deny yourself, what else? Uh huh. Okay, let's read it. Let's read it. Luke 9, 23 to 25. All right? And the Bible reads Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? And that's the question. What's the freedom you are working for? The real freedom is coming with a price, a high price. What's the price you need to pay for that? What's the price you need to pay to be free. Is your purpose the same purpose of God or do you have another purpose? Can you handle the real freedom? Let's see here how a Jesus tells to the, the people in John 8, 31. And that's another one uh, from the discipleship. I, I think maybe you guys know that one, right? What it says? John 8, 31, Juan 8, 31. What it says? <laughs> okay. Good thing we're going to have first principles soon. <laughs> Amen. Okay. To the Jews who have believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's the real freedom. The teachings of Jesus going to give you the freedom. But can you handle it? Let's see how these guys handle that concept. It's amazing. Because, look, they answer him. We are Abraham's descendants and have never been a slave of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? And for us as a disciples, or for us as we're reading, we can see they're a slave of something. You can see they were a slave of pride. How you relate on that scripture? Are you those, uh, knowing by a person that anyone can come to you and ask you, hey bro, you're doing wrong in this, or you're doing wrong in this area? How are you going to react? Oh, no, no, don't tell me. And these guys were slaves of the pride. They were so prideful. They're slaves. They don't even know. Let's keep reading. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Okay? Jesus was clear. For Jesus was clear. These guys are super prideful. That sin. He didn't offend them. But he understood they were on sin. He didn't even answer what they say. He was saying, well, whoever is a slave of the sin, I mean, he's a sinner, right? So then, now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will free indeed. I know that you're Abraham's descendants. It's kind of Jesus saying, hello, I understand. Yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. 
Why? Because they're not ready to handle the real freedom. This morning, are you ready to handle the real freedom? Because you basically need to die to yourself and understand the real freedom have a price to pay. And the price to pay is not only coming on Sundays. Sundays is, let's say, is the culmination of your life as a disciple and the celebration as a family. And it's just a little bit of boost to start your next week. But what you do during the week is, what is going to determine that you are a disciple or not. That you are willing to basically hold in Jesus' teachings. Right? So these guys get crazy. And they reply, Abraham is our father, they answer. So at this point, you can see they don't listen. And it's where I tell you, the voice can be so powerful into the message. You can say the same thing in three, five different tones, and it's going to mean different things. But at this point, these guys were screaming out, Jesus, you don't understand. Abraham is our father. You know nothing. Jesus, is that your attitude when God asks you to do something? You know nothing, Jesus. Why these people left? Why this situation is happening? Why my car is broken again in the same time, in the same week for three times? Why I'm not rich? Why I'm not beautiful? Why I'm not skinny? Dinner time explains it, right? So, but we can see here the people not listen to God. They're not ready to handle the price for real freedom. They're not. The question is, again, are you ready to handle? This church is not perfect. Let me tell you that. And I'm sorry, I have to tell it right here in front of the whole congregation. The church is not perfect. Why? Because I'm here. And I'm a human with a lot of mistakes. But then, also is you. And you're also a human with a lot of mistakes. That's why the church is not perfect, right? We are sinners trying to not sin to each other, try to not hurt each other, but we will make mistakes. Why people leave God? Because that's the reality, okay? The people doesn't leave the church, the people leave God. If you think deeply, when the people leave, it's not because of you or because of me. The people leave because they didn't love enough God to keep fighting the good fight. It hurts, of course, but it's nothing you can do to me that I'm going to leave the kingdom of God. I don't know if it's something that I can do to you in order for you to leave the kingdom of God. Because if something happens, that means you really wasn't loving God enough. So we need to understand that. And there's these guys thinking, Jesus, you're crazy. Jesus, you don't know what you're doing. Jesus, you don't know what you're saying. Abraham is our father. And I want to keep believing that Abraham is my father. Whoever you tell me this morning, I'm not going to listen because I want to keep following my freedom and pursuing my dreams. Let's go to the last point. The true freedom or Jesus, our true hero. Let's go to Galatians 5.1. In Galatians 5.1, We'll see here. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm and then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a joke of slavery. This is a warning. Jesus is telling us, be aware. Jesus gives you freedom. Jesus set you free. And you can ask yourselves, like the, like the last guys, right? The 
Pharisees, is correct, Pharisees. They were saying, our father is Abraham. Okay, so in this one, Jesus is telling us, he set us free. And sometimes you can be like the Pharisees, or I can be like the Pharisees. That, well, he's setting me free for what? Man, I don't have time for myself. Monday I have disciple time, Tuesday I have disciple time, the Wednesday I have church. So why am I free? I'm not free. I don't have many time. All the Saturday I have two dates, and then I have uh, these, these situations, and oh my God. So why am I free? Yes, you're free. You are free. And then the, 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 the interesting thing here is the freedom that Christ gives us we need to stand firm and don't let ourselves to be burdened for the slavery of the sin. So how is this works, okay? So in between everything that we have to do as disciples, okay, the most important thing we need to protect is keep ourselves firm in a relationship with God because God makes us free. So when I don't feel free, it's because I start to complain as a disciple. Oh, man, it's because I don't have time for this. Why? Because I start to put my feet on the other side. So I'm in, in, in basically in, in a split situation, which basically one feet in the world, and one feet in whatever I want to do, and one feet what God wants me to do, right? So as you can see, right, I cannot move. So either way, I'm going to be totally in God's, doing his will, I can move. But if I'm in between, I'm not be able to move. So, oh, I'm here, or I'm here, in order to be free. Be free of what? Okay, if I'm a slave of something, is the first thing, and I, I always ask this question, and everybody has a answer wrong. Who's the person you love the most? Exactly, yourself. Yourself. The person that you love the most is yourself. It's not your mom, it's not your dad, it's not your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or wife. It's yourself. So the freedom of Jesus is telling here is that freedom from loving so much yourself that you're going to destroy yourself, destroy your family, destroy your friends, destroy everything around. Because you are the king, you are the God. And this is very important to understand because so many times as a disciples, we pray, oh God, please make this guy who come disciple, he's awesome, he can lead the church. And, and you see the guy, he's coming, he started studying the Bible, he left. But he left not alone. He left and he grabbed a weak sister and they get married. And you're super uh, mad with God. Oh God, and he took the, the sister that was my interest, and oh my God, how is this possible? And you're super uh, 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 mad with God. But you know, God is God. And God basically made everything to show up our character. God made everything to show you his will. In, in so many times, people in the religious way think that God uh, okay, yeah, I'm happy, I sing, oh God, hallelujah, uh, God, da, 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 and you're super happy. You're not missing contribution, oh yeah, my contribution, I'm happy, I'm a happy giver, right? And then, uh, so you're a super happy person. But when situations happen, you think that God is against you. You don't understand that God is building up character in yourself. And then, this word, being a Christian is become a burden. And it's exactly because you still attach to your freedom, not to God's freedom. God's freedom, you don't need nothing. It's like Paul. I've been learning to live with much, with nothing, with hunger, with banquets, with anything. That's the real freedom. The freedom in which you don't need nothing. That's the freedom. That freedom in only you need God to be completely in full. Remember to be slave of God. Either way, you're going to be slave of yourself, of God. You choose which one is harder, which one is stronger, which one is going to be amazing. 
For, let's go First Timothy one fifteen. First Timothy one fifteen. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus may display his immersed patient as an example for those who believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is very important because uh, so many times we could find ourselves complaining because we have so much to do. When the kingdom and all the activities start to become a burden, it's because you are start to attach to yourself again. This shouldn't be a burden. This is actually refreshing. Every time that you have, yeah, you have Monday study, you have disciple time on Tuesday, you have a midweeks with the woman and Wednesday, then you have another study, and you have, you have everything in your uh, basically schedule full. That's awesome. Because it's going to help you to keep yourself faithful. But also, when that is not happening, it's because you're not understanding the freedom in Christ. The freedom in Christ goes more and beyond. When everything starts to build up, a, oh man, that's why I don't want to be Christian, because these guys go to church Wednesday, Sunday, oh man, and even, oh my God, Fridays too? These people, is crazy. It's so, because you give so much to the church, right? But this is something important. And when you feel like this, it's because you're not understanding something. You think the freedom is what you, is going to make you happy. That is not true. Okay? Uh, the earthly or worldly freedom is just fake. And it's going to end it up in one moment. Because either or with any other situation, you will feel, will feel a slave of something. And you will start to find or looking for something else that is going to make you feel free. It could be from drugs to sex. It could be from relationship to another relationship. In which, oh, in this relationship, I feel great. Oh, no, I feel amazing. No, you, you just basically change your master. It's the same thing. But when that happens also, it's because you haven't understand the truth, freedom, is eternal. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. In this scripture, is going to basically uh, click the, how you say, the coin the thing? Yeah, the coin, the, well, your, your bulb is going to light, or how you say that in English? That expression, this, te va a prender el foco. Ah? Well, it's called a illumination uh, process. When you hear the, okay? So, this is the true freedom, okay? Verse 19. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all of, we are all, People must to be pitied. So if your hope in Christ, it's only for this world, you know, you're going to be so sad as a disciple. You haven't understand the real freedom is eternal. It's not just a moment. Fake freedom is just a moment. If you need time for yourself, that's fake freedom. You need to give up yourself and start to act like a real hero. True freedom is eternal. Faith freedom is temporal. Which one of you, which of the ones you will choose will determine your eternity. 
And I encourage you to start to change the way you think and the way you live and start to looking for the true freedom that is reachable only through Jesus Christ. To God be the glory.